Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another test-driven development video. Last time we proved out our design concept for the application, uh, proved that it could work, which was the most important thing because I'm not sure how to test it. I didn't want to spend a lot of time uh, figuring out how to test it um, or if, if it wasn't going to work in general. So let me just run through this. Um, I know some of you have just seen this, but I want to run through it for my own purposes as well. The basic structure of the code is that we have this application model instance which is going to contain all of our application data and mediate the interactions between the various components. So that application model is going to be instantiated in our application frame. When the starting balance field, uh, which is this field right here, and in the future, uh, you know, all the other fields are going to be mediated by this as well. When the starting balance field catches an event, it's going to tell the application model what to do. So in this case, it's going to say set starting balance to uh, you know, $12,345. Down in application model, set starting balance is going to do nothing more than create a new stock market projection and then tell the model to update its projection to use or to, to use that new projection. Down in stock market table model, it's going to, of course, use that projection and then uh, fire an event saying that the table data has changed. And that's actually built into Swing. So I'm, I'm not doing a whole lot of code here, and it feels pretty clean to me. Uh, you know, all the business logic for the UI, all the interaction logic, is going to be here in application model. And that feels really solid to me. And then as it gets more complicated, we can delegate down to other models, uh, like we're delegating down to stock market table model, we can delegate the details to other objects, which should allow us to have a really nice, simple, clean design that will hopefully be easily tested. And you can see, if I put something in here, at the moment it doesn't matter what, uh, and fire that event, it does work. So that's, that's cool. I'm, I'm liking this. Now the question is, how do I actually get this code to work? So I'm going to go back through and I'm going to take out, uh, I, I'm sorry, I said how do I get it to work. What I mean is how do I get, how do I prove that it works? How do I test it? Um, so I'm going to take all this code back out. I'm going to leave it in as uh, spike code and I'll even uh, make comments on it. And down here in stock market table model. Okay. Now, if I were doing a mock driven approach, uh, I would start at the top with application frame and use mock objects to, to sort of code this down. But since I'm not doing that, I am going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to start at the bottom, establish the methods that I need uh, at the bottom, and then work my way. So the very first one would be stock market table model. I need to write some tests to prove that set projection works. And I need set projection to do two things. One, I need it to change the projection. Uh, and two, I need it to fire that table data changed method. So let's go ahead and start with that. Um, we're going to need, let's go ahead and open our, our scratch pad back up. And we're going to need our stock market table model tests. Okay, so do we have any tests around this? No, we don't. Okay, so first off, did we set the projection properly? I think, I mean that, if that was all we were doing, uh, I w might not even test it, but as it is, uh, I do want to test it. So we, I want to say that set projection uh, should change underlying uh, projection. And actually, I'm just going to do it this way. My naming conventions for the tests have, have not been very consistent. And that's because over the years, I've used so many different naming conventions. And I still haven't really found one that I like. I haven't found one that I love. The should style is is okay. Um, it's, it gets pretty verbose, and it I find that it tends to focus my attention in the wrong areas. 
the style where you where you look at the method names, I actually really like that uh, in a lot of ways because it forces you to focus your method names on the behavior that you want. So the method becomes about behavior, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then the style of just you know talking about behavior but not particular methods. I think that's actually the worst of both worlds. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so those of you who are irritated by my naming style, uh, well, yes, it is a little irritating. It would probably be better to just pick one, but part of what I'm doing here is exploring a bunch of ideas. So, so there you go. So what I want is this should um, actually, yeah, I'm <laughs> set projection should change the projection, and and that should change the answers. So here we have yeah. Sorry, I know what I want to do here. I don't know how to explain it, so I'm just going to do it. Oh, actually, I, that was the wrong refactoring. I actually want it to be done here in the setup method. So if we change the projection, and we use a projection that um, has the same starting year, or ends in the same year that it starts, then that should have changed the projection. So we're expecting there to just be one row. And that method doesn't exist. I like I like the idea of that being up at the top because it seems so fundamental. That should fail. Should say expected one was 40, 41. Yeah, perfect. Now we need to get that fire data table data changed uh, bit in there, and that's a little more tricky. So changing changing the projection should change. The table model. And then here, changing the projection should fire a table data update. Should fire update event. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the projection. We're going to do this code again. which means that I might want to combine, combine this method with the following one. So we're going to set the projection, and then what we should get is we should be able to get some sort of uh, event happening. 
So this becomes a little bit tricky. What we need to do is register a way of, yeah, add a table model listener. So let's take a quick look. Actually, I'm going to, because there's not much time left, I'm going to pause the video, take a quick look at the documentation, be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so there's this interface, which is table model listener, and it only has one method on it. Um, so we're going to want to create a new one of those. And it's going to have a method called table change that takes a table model event. And I don't know what's going on in that table model event. Let's go ahead and import that. So, uh, maybe it'd be quicker to look at this. So, I think we're going to expect all the rows to change. So the first row that should change should be 0, and the last row that change should be uh, 40. So this is a bit tricky. Um, well, first, we just need this to fire at all. So unfortunately, Java lacks proper closure, so that's not as easy as I would like. Um, what we need to do is to have this test fail if the event is not fired. And right now it doesn't fail if the event's not fired. Now, because this, because this isn't a proper closure, what that means is that we cannot change primitives that are not, that are defined outside of this method. We can't change a primitive that was here. So we couldn't say boolean um, event fired equals false and then say event fired equals true and then say assert uh, true event should have been fired event fired. That's what we'd like to do and if we were using a language with proper closures Ruby, JavaScript, <laughs> uh, any number of languages that would work just fine, but we can't because this has to be final, and if it's final, we can't change it. So there's a hack, which is that we will use um, a boolean, which is an object. Uh, can we set the value of an? Uh, no, it's it's immutable. All right, so we'll use a boolean array and then say the yeah, event fired zero is yeah so <laughs> there we have it so what's happening here uh, just really quickly what's happening is that event fired variables are that are allocated on the stack can't be changed within uh, these in inner methods, these anonymous inner methods, but uh, we can change anything on the heap. So we're allocating this this array on the stack, and then changing, and it's all of its values are allocated on the heap. Then we're changing what's uh, anyway. If it doesn't make sense to you, I'm sorry. I don't. I've got about 40 seconds left. It's hard to explain. So. Uh, go Google it, I guess. If it does make sense, congratulations. Um, you understand just how insane this is. So that failed for the right reason. So now I should be able to just say this dot fire table uh, data changed. And that should work. Fingers crossed. Oh, it did not work. Well, uh, I may have gotten it entirely wrong in terms of how this is working. And uh, uh, but that's all that we have time for, so I will catch you next time.